What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Igmatica 2 Expert. Oh, yeah, guys. So last episode, we went to the end. We conquered the end. Um, and then I think off camera, I went and I found like a bunch of different strongholds, or I guess the end cities actually is what they're called. Uh, so we got three elytras. We got three dragon heads. Then we ended up getting that one dragon heart from killing the dragon. So it wasn't such a bad trip there. Um, yeah, I realized that I <laughs> left the reactor on. I had to go grab some more uranium to power our small extreme reactor back up. Yep. Anyway, uh, so this stuff we can put all away. We did get some other things like a bunch of diamond tools. Uh, one of them's got mending on it, but these only have a durability of one. So essentially they're really only good for disenchanting. But this I think was the only tool maybe that we got mending on. So yeah, we do have mending if we want to use that on various different things, like our bow would be good for that, or I don't know, we're using Tinker's tools pretty much for all of our tools at the moment. Uh, maybe shears or some of these other items that are in our inventory here could benefit from mending, but you know, in either way, uh, books from the library, yeah, we ended up with a decent amount of books. We don't have to worry about those for quite some time, and yeah, there was a whole bunch of other things that we ended up getting. In fact... Do I have some in this thing still? Let me take a look. Uh, Celestial Crystal Shard and Plinks. Oh, actually, <laughs> I guess I never put the books in there. Never mind. All right, so, whoop. Yeah, double click all those things in there. No, we ended up with quite a few more books in that, and obviously I got a bunch of endstone here. I figured I should vein mine while I was there in the end. But um, as I was kind of looking at the things that we were trying to do here, we're trying to make the terrestrial artifact, right? And then I was going to make the empowered emerald and that required no it wasn't the emerald it was the redstone and that one required us to have the ruby ore and that we saw comes from sieving crushed endstone now we could take the endstone we have and i think we could put it through the pulverizer and that might crush it i haven't actually looked but what i think we should probably do is just head back to the end let's take a look real quick let's see a hammer does it pulverizer does do it so we could take like a stack of that and put it through uh, our pulverizer here, if it'll shift click in there. Yeah, we can get crushed in stone this way, but I think it might be better if we just make ourselves a diamond hammer. Um, this one. Yeah, this diamond hammer here. And we just make one of these and go vein mine directly in the end. I feel like we'll just be better overall. Like we can get a lot more of it real quick. It doesn't cost us additional power and all of that sorts of stuff. Oop, I don't have that on my bar okay bounce so i'm gonna head back to the end real quick i am going to do a little bit of vein mining there hopefully get a whole bunch of that crushed end stone we won't have to worry about it hopefully get quite a bit of it because it looked like there's at least one other uh one other empowered item that requires the gems that the biomes of plenty gems that we get from sieving the crushed end stones so yeah i think that should be Pretty good, so I will see you guys in the end. All right, guys, so here we are in the end. Uh, we just came through our warp over here. I believe over in this direction was where I originally did a little bit of vein mining. Let's see if I can find it real quick. This looks like, yeah, this has got to be it. Got a whole bunch of like these squared off cutouts here. Yeah, so we warped out to like the outer island area of the end, and then I started vein mining. I don't really want to vein mine on the main island because we'll probably be there again trying to kill more dragons later on or whatever. And then I'll just make it kind of annoying to have to deal with. Um, so yeah, what I'll do is I'll just mine one of these. There we go. There's a crushed end stone. We can throw that into our dink knoll. There we go. And yeah, just press down the vein mine button and vein mine a whole bunch of that stuff using our uh, using our diamond hammer. My kitty keeps trying to get my attention. <laughs> there we go, a whole bunch more. So we got over a thousand of it in just a couple of seconds. It would have taken quite some time trying to wait on our pulverizer to do the same amount of work for us. Oh, gotta eat. So where we at now, we're at 2,000. I'll just do a few more. I honestly don't know how much of this stuff we're going to need. I can't imagine we're going to need much more than what we have already. But maybe I'll just finish up this diamond hammer here. Just go ahead and let it break. Oop, got to eat again. So what is it, like two more of these vein mines should pretty much destroy this hammer. And 
There it goes. Awesome. So we ended up getting 4,096 crushed endstone. Okay. Well, we got what we came for. It's time to head back and meet you guys back at the base. So warping back and forth between the end and the overworld is fine and good. We have to reset our ring of the flying squid every time, take it off, put it back on, and then we can fly. Same thing when I go to the end. If I forget to do that and I try and jump off the platform in the end, yeah, I'm going to fall to my death, and that's not going to be cool. Uh, but besides that, our extra hearts that we're getting from this nutrition mod, I forget the name of it, uh, those all go away. So as soon as we warp from one dimension to the other, it just shows that we have just red hearts again. And then it eats up all of our additional saturation and I have to keep eating food in order to recover it all so it'll fill all of our hearts back up. That's kind of annoying. Hmm. Anyway, uh, so we have our crushed endstone here. We can take this out of the dink knoll, or I guess a good portion of it. I'll do the rest of it later. Put that all up into our applied energistics. Uh, so we need to get ourselves a sieve. So sieve, 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 we need one of these. So that does require a mana infused gear. So mithril. M M Myth? M Y T H? I don't think we have that. Mana infused. I believe I recall seeing somewhere that mana infused could be made. Mana infused. Let's take a look. Mana infused ingots. There was like a crafting recipe for this or something. So that's mana infused ore. Is it the ore that could be crafted? Uh, I'll have to go back through. Just enough information. Yeah, I'll have to go back through the book. I remember something about that. Maybe the dust could be made. Hmm. Okay, well, tell you what, I will look at that later. Uh, so besides that, we need that gear. We're going to need nickel plates, enriched alloy, and then some kind of wood. So a lot of that we already have. That's not a big deal. Uh, and then we're also going to need the mesh. So the diamond stiffened mesh, I believe, is what we absolutely needed in order to do anything here. So, yeah, this is the recipe that we're looking at. So it looks like ruby, peridot, topaz, tanzanite, malachite, sapphire, all can be uh, brought from that. And then I guess amber, too. I guess it takes up two lines. Okay, so that's what we want to do. So in order to make the diamond stiffened mesh, we have to have an iron stiffened mesh with diamonds which requires a flint stiffened plus iron and string stiffened plus flint and the string stiffened is just string okay so we can start there so string turns into the flint and iron and whoop, diamond cool so there is the diamond stiffened mesh uh, i gotta figure out like i was just saying how to make that mithril i remember seeing that there was a quest or something earlier on that said that you could craft it i'll have to go back through the book Aha! So, yeah, if you go into the quest book on the sieve for Gate X and I Hello, which doesn't actually have a chapter, it says Man Infusing gets are craftable. I remember reading that a few times previously. Uh, so, now that we've read that, if we go into here and look at the Man Infused Ingot, there is more information. It says only attainable through the Metallurgic Infuser, the Advanced Metallurgic Fabricator, and other planets. So yeah, that one of the first things that I saw here when I was looking at this is the advanced metallurgic fabricator. So four mana steel ingots plus a diamond gives you six of those. So this will probably be the end game thing that we'll be making these in the future if we need mass quantities. Uh, metallurgic infuser is the next thing that we can do. And that is actually, this might be the better recipe. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, so compressed diamond plus a mana steel gives us a mana fused ingot here. So we need to make at least four of those. I'm not sure how many you get per the like, compressed diamond. Some recipes cost more. You might get one, you might get eight. I don't know. So we will have to check that out. So we need mana steel ingots. I'm not sure if we have any of those. Actually, we have some right here. So we have three mana steel. How, what's the recipe on those? So you drop just iron into the mana pool. That's cheap. Okay, iron. So let us just try and make like eight of those. And then we'll do one recipe and see if one compressed diamond does the trick. How much mana? Man, we don't have very much mana at all, do we? Got enough for that, though. Okay. So now that we have that, let's grab ourselves a compressed diamond. Yoink. Okay. And throw that in there with this. Okay, so we're only going to be able to do four per diamond. 
So I need to go get myself another compressed diamond. Cool. Okay, so we have the mana infused ingots, which should be enough. Well, four of them are enough to make a gear, so we can make a mana infused gear. Like so, like so. Cool. All right, put back the plate. So there's our mana infused gear. Now the rest of this that we needed was two nickel plates. Easy. Okay, so I made enough for two of these sieves since we made uh, eight of those mana infused ingots, makes sense. So there is one and two. Awesome. So we have that complete. We should get a quest complete and there it is. And that's gonna give us the option of a diamond iron or a flint or does it actually no, that gives us all of them. Okay, so we get all of those. So we get two diamond stiff and meshes since we already made one, okay. Uh, I'm not sure where we're gonna do this. I guess we're just gonna set this down somewhere. It's just gonna be like a temporary thing until it's a permanent thing. But for right now, there's those, and then we can grab some of our crushed in stone. We should be able to do two at a time. Okay. This is gonna take a minute. Yep, that's gonna take a minute. So already we got a pair dot and some amber. Now, didn't we get like a mechanical user? We have these. I'm not entirely sure if like you can hook up multiple of those. Like, is this gonna work? I don't know. I guess we'll find out here in just a second. Oh, it's facing the wrong way. We need to get ourselves a wrench. All right. So if I tell this thing to activate block with item, use item on block, yeah, activate block with item and I put some of that in there. That does not appear to work. Right click, random slot, upper left slot only, always on. Yeah, I guess they made it so this doesn't work, huh? Activate block with item, right click, random slot, upper left only. And no. Okay, so this is manual only. The mechanical users apparently are blacklisted from working with this. I'm fairly certain uh, in the past that I have been able to automate those with <laughs> the mechanical users, but apparently not in this mod pack. Okay, well anyway, I'm just gonna sit here and do this until we get a decent amount of uh, what we're looking for here, the materials that we need. I might make a few more of these sieves. It might be best to have like nine of them. But anyway, I'm gonna get to this, we'll be back. So I'm in the process of making nine of these we got three more to go we ran out of mana in order to make the rest of our mana infused ingots how much we got now oh it looks like we had enough now cool so we have enough to do the rest of what we're gonna do here which is awesome uh, i ended up using coal blocks yeah i'm trying to get this thing to go longer this time uh these endo flames really are pretty poor as far as mana generation but up until this point we haven't really needed better mana generation we've only needed little bits of mana um so i don't think we're quite at the point where we're going to upgrade that but yeah we definitely should look at doing that at some point in the future i think um but anyway what i wanted to do now that we have a bunch of these sieves um i believe these meshes can be enchanted and i was kind of looking i thought we had already received some kind of like enchanted books or whatever for that but i guess we don't so yeah, nothing that we have right now is enchanted, uh, or I guess enchantable. Oh, I guess I will need lapis, and I will need some XP. Let's grab some out of here. Okay, so we're gonna do some level one enchants here and see if we can, hopefully just right away, oh, I guess that retains the lapis in it. Civ efficiency, okay, so that's good. So civ efficiency is one of the ones that we're gonna want. We'll take that and we will disenchant it. I think we had that disenchanting, uh, the enchant, this thing, the unenchant pylon. It's been a minute since we last used this. I remember it required power, but that's all I remember. Uh, oh yeah, okay, so it requires bottle of enchanting, that stuff, and then we can do that. We need a book. We got plenty of books now. We don't have to worry about that. Was a glowstone, redstone, and then a bottle. Oh, enchanting. Do we have any bottles remaining? We have a little bit. Okay, and I think we could, yeah, we just put those right in here. Cool. So that's all we needed to do. So we can place that, 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 and that. Awesome. 
So now we get the unenchanted mesh back plus sieve efficiency. Okay. So now, as we've done before, we can take that on our printing press, duplicate it, get it to efficient or get it multiple efficiency ones, put it onto the anvil, make efficiency two, and repeat this process until we get the highest sieve efficiency, which I think is four. Let's take a look at these. No, five. Five is the highest efficiency. So we want to go all the way up to five. And then we're going to want Civ Fortune as well. Luck of the Sea, I don't really think we need at the moment. But yeah, I want to get Fortune and I want to get Efficiency. So if I take this and I try and enchant it again, it's just Efficiency that I see here. I wonder if that requires a higher level of enchantability. Yeah. Okay, well... I really want to get the Civ Fortune. That'll help us out a lot. So I am going to play around with this for a little bit until we can get that enchant. And then we'll be right back, guys. Well, I knew I had a Civ Efficiency book around here somewhere. Yep. I remember getting that at one point, but that doesn't really matter anymore. We have a few more books in here. I did have to make the Efficiency 2 Chase, the Efficiency 3, the 4, and then uh, the 5 we have just used all the way to get the rest of these books. Uh, and then we got Civ Fortune. I had to put oak bookshelves around our enchantment table, and we finally were able to get a lucky one. Hey, here's another one, Civ Fortune 2. In fact, that's what we had to do, was take a Fortune 2, anvil it to a 3 after we duplicated it, and then duplicate even more of them. So yes, we have got some stuff now. We can take all of these guys. Do those not stack? I thought they stacked. Maybe that one doesn't stack because I'd already enchanted it. Yeah, that must be it. It's got some NBT data remaining or something um so i am kind of curious i want to see the difference let's take one of these we'll put efficiency oh that cost 20 levels oh my goodness we're going to be going through the rest of our xp here uh 20 levels there we go try to be as frugal with our xp as possible so that plus the civ efficiency so let's take a look at what the difference between the Civ Efficiency one and the non-Civ Efficiency is. So there's that. Let's grab some Crushed Endstone. I can't do it there. We'll do it here. So I right-click it. One. Oh, it does put in the other one. I guess we can see it. So three right-clicks, and that one's done. If I come over here, I have to right-click it more. So try that again over here. And then we right click it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Looks like when I right click that, when I right click this one, two, three, yeah. I don't know why it doesn't keep right clicking it, or if it's a bug that I right clicked it to begin with after I placed them in there and I right clicked this one the first time. But anyway, you can see like it makes it a lot faster just having the efficiency on there. And the fortune is going to make this even better still because that'll get us greater chances of these different drops yep so i'm gonna go ahead and chant up all of these guys we have efficiency on this one let's put fortune what does that cost 38 levels goodness yeah we're probably not gonna have enough xp to do all nine of those uh but since they're gonna be more efficient i think it'll be fine the way it is anyway 39 goodness uh that guy and that guy all right well there's one of them <laughs> Let me do the rest of them, try and get some more of the stuff sieving, and we'll be back. Well, thankfully, we didn't run out of XP. We still got some remaining here. Now, I want to show you guys a little bit of a trick. So when you take these books that I copied, we took them from like a low level, we anviled them, we brought them up to a higher level, we anviled them, so on and so forth, all the way to Civ Efficiency 5, right? If I take this and I combine it with this one, it costs 22 levels. It's a little expensive. Um, and the reason for that is because there's NBT data on here saying, Hey, you've repaired it. You've done something to it. And that's the new value 22. Yeah. It gets a little expensive. And then when I want to, when I combine those and put it onto a, the mesh and it's like, it wants 40 more levels. So it's like a total of 60 levels. It gets pretty expensive. Um, so if we grab some bottles here, we can fill those up full of this liquid XP, which isn't taking very much of it at all. Right. Hardly used any. And then we get some redstone and some glowstone. Glowstone. Okay. Let me just put it over here into this guy. So we can take these books 
the ones that are these are just the enchanted books and we can disenchant the enchanted book uh we need the enchanting in there so we get back a regular book and we get back a book that has an enchantment on it now why do we want to do that well what it's doing is it's removing that nbt data that's saying hey you've repaired this book or you've done whatever so many times yeah it's resetting it back to zero so it's like this is the first time this book has done anything so we put those into the anvil you can see that reduced the cost down to six and then when i apply this to a mesh it only costs 12. so that's saving us a whole heck of a lot of experience here yeah so that's how i was able to uh to do the rest of those and retain some xp otherwise i don't think we would have been able to do all of them mm -hmm. so yeah we got that going on that's pretty cool i'll just put all those books away for now and those are probably not going to stack we look we got some of the civ fortunes that are stacking but the ones that i just did are not um if i would have been smart about this i would have taken one of the original ones we made from the five brought it over here disenchanted it then recopied it and then we would have been duplicating the low cost versions of those but anyway we were able to make progress the way it was um so now that we have these six set up with the efficiency and the fortune like we can see how fast this sieves now and we are getting a lot of items pretty quickly which is fantastic yep so getting these different gemstones that we need not a big deal anymore and then if we want to use these for sieving other materials like iron or whatever i didn't really look at what all the things that we can do with the diamond mesh let's actually take a look real quick there might be something really useful so like getting diamonds and stuff we can get out of there what about dust we can get certus and more redstone other such materials uh the nether ores well actually no magnesium lithium boron those are nuclear craft ores uh and thorium so we can get that from crushed nether rack so this will probably be pretty useful later on uh we can get aquamarine and prismarine okay uh and glowstone nether quartz and gas tears that's actually not so bad the nether quartz from that that'll save me having to go to the nether and flying around for forever i can just get a whole bunch of soul sand and get more quartz that way if we need more building blocks mm -hmm. okay well yeah now that we got that done i can definitely continue on with our process here that we're trying to do uh let's get rid of this we don't need chase anymore we don't need sieve anymore uh we're just looking for these empowered blocks i believe empowered redstone was the next one so we needed whatever this item is which comes from rubies in front of the actually additions laser I don't think we're gonna make eight of them, but I'll just make a few extras for now. Laser that. Sweet, we got those. All right, so again, we needed Ardite Tool Rod. Do we have any Ardite? We have a little bit. Okay, so we can take that. Uh, I'll do those. Those don't duplicate in the smelter. I think we have to do it here. So I'll pulverize that down. We'll smelt it into the ingots, and we'll get a lot more out of our Ardite this way. Cool. And I think a tool rod is one ingot. I can't remember. Let's see somewhere. One ingot. Yeah, one ingot for the tool rod. How many of these we're gonna do? I don't know. Let's take a look at this redstone. We don't have any. Now let's do like four of them. I guess we could do eight, but let's just do four of them. Okay, so we have the redstone. We have four of those ingots. We needed four of these. And what else was it? Uh, red nether brick. So that's just nether brick and nether quartz. There's four of those. And finally, we need the redstone reception coil. So that's metallurgic confuser. Yeah, so redstone plus gold redstone reception coil. We do have one. I will just go ahead and make some more. And that was gold. I guess we're going to make eight more. Another recipe of those. Okay, so now that we have all of this stuff together, actually, I just remembered we had some of the redstone over there, didn't we? <laughs> okay, this is not working. What did I do wrong? Redstone. Oh, maybe it requires a lot more redstone than what I gave it. Okay, uh, I remember doing this before, but I don't remember how much it took. So let's try putting in a second one. Okay, so that is 100. Okay, so that's two of those equals one of these. 
So we need just two more, I guess. I was thinking we would get eight of them per one of these, but no, it's a little bit more expensive than that. That should be all that we need. So we should be able to get going here. So the redstone reception coils here. And yeah, like I said, <laughs> I forgot that we had this guy right here. But that's just one of them. And I do want to make more than that. So let's put some of these on. Oh, yeah, I guess I have to do the smeltery thing too. Okay, so tool rod time. All right, guys. Well, we got a lot of this stuff going on here. It's going to take a bit of time for the rest of these to complete, but I got the rest of the Redstone Crystal, the Empowered ones done. I finished up doing a bunch of these Emerald ones. We don't really need that many, but I figure, you know, since we're on it, we might as well do a bunch of them. So we have to do Diamonds, Inori, uh, Diamonds, Iron, uh, Coal, and Lapis. Still a few more of those to go, but we're running short on time for this episode. So I think we're going to go ahead and call it right where we're at right now. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good stopping point for us for today. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.